I hope Firefox. Um, but a few comments, uh, people saying they wouldn't mind trying the, the fire plow, so I thought it's about time I got a tutorial together and show you uh, everything I've learned. Uh, uh, best way to go about things, um, things not to do. So let's get to it, yeah? The first thing, the key thing to this, um, I can't really emphasize it enough, but it's materials, yeah? If you can't get all of the right materials, I won't, I won't bother even trying, to be honest, because uh, you're just gonna get wound up, frustrated. Um, trust me, I did it. I, uh, I had to learn the hard way. There weren't many tutorials when I was uh, learning it. Um, I did have a demo uh, of a guy, uh, Ponsa Jerker, great guy, he, he gave me a set initially that I got my first ember on and that was um, Poplar on Lime uh, Combo. Uh, I uh, have moved on since that because obviously I'm out here in the tropics in, in Thailand. Um, I've tried all sorts. Uh, what I have got to my, my first success was a one called Yellow Mombin. Um, then I had river tamarinds that I got to work, uh, it hit and miss, some unknown wood I've tried, uh, and then I stumbled on this Malayan cherry, absolutely ideal for, for it, great. Um, if you're in other areas where they've got sea hibiscus, that is meant to be one of the best uh, plow woods. Um, if you're in like, I don't know, the southern parts of the states, uh, you, you got Sotal, another really good option. Um, if you're further north in the northern hemisphere, um, like I said, I got um, Poplar on Lime, uh, was my first success with it. But I sort of prefer, instead of combos, uh, I like to um, use the same, same wood on the same wood, really. Um, so like lime on lime, if you're in the northern hemisphere, uh, cottonwood, which is poplar, you'll have it have in the states. Um, hazel on poplar. Uh, Ian at Sacred Half, he had a, his his first success in the UK with, uh, with hazel on poplar. I believe it was. And man, he's he's moved on. He's he's got lime working. He's got willow to work. Um, ivy is another option so materials 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 guys get yourself the right materials yeah i'd say lime in the northern hemisphere of cotton wood are your first go-to options and if you've got sea hibiscus go for that if you can go with this uh, malayan cherry yeah right material Next thing, yeah, your baseboard. So, you want ideally a long branch, yeah. Um, that you can uh, sit on, yeah. That's a traditional method, but I'll get into posture later. So, a long branch, yeah. Don't have to, you can make it secure without it moving about and use it as it is. But I like to um, split it so I've got a flat base. Yeah, just make sure the Secure, yeah. Doesn't move as much, yeah. You've got a flatter base. There's some high spots. We're making it right. Just whip them off. Because 
no movement is key as well with it. Another key factor. If your wood's rocking around when you're plowing, you're losing energy, yeah? That should be going directly into your, your plowing groove. So you don't want any movement, yeah? Next thing, yeah, you're gonna call the a flat spot. So you get the get the outer bark off. And the inner bark there. So make yourself flat point yeah leave those shavings on to act for your, a, a stopping point there then what I do right next to uh, where I want my dust to build up is just make a little divot that will help on a stopping point, yeah, just a little divot there, all right, and you want to get it jammed up tight against something so there's no movement, yeah, and um, if it's rocking, like I said, that's bad, so, and what you can do to secure it is, I like to kneel on it, yeah, Traditionally, let's get back. Traditionally, they sort of sit on it like that to secure it, yeah? And then sort of twist, yeah? It doesn't really matter, as long as it's secure, I like to kneel on it like that personally. And I can get right above, I'm not twisted, yeah? Um, if you haven't got a long branch, you can get a, a board to work, yeah? But again, you need to trap it up against something at the end there, yeah? And what you can do is get a couple of boards over it like that. Just trap it down, yeah? And then... Where you go like that. You can even uh, get a short board, bag a, bang a peg in like that. If you haven't got a stop, you can big surface like that. You can bang some pegs in. As long as it's firmly secured down, yeah. That's that's the uh, the point I'm making. You can also use a big weight and track it like that. That log, yeah? Um that's still have to secure the other end though. That that's a good method is a big rock or a big slab like that. The wood. No movement, yeah? So the next thing, yeah. The blade. Right. You want it about 25 to 30 centimetres long, yeah? Little branches work good. Uh, round, oval, whatever. As long as it's comfy to hold, this is about two centimeters thick. Yeah. Um, I don't know how long this long, 25-ish centimeters. Yeah. Comfy to hold. The end bit, right? I'll show you what you shouldn't do. Uh, which was one of my biggest failings when I started, is uh, have it a sharp edge like that and tapered. That's how I believed it had worked best at first. But what you're actually doing as you work your way down, it's getting thicker, thicker, so it's getting progressively harder, yeah, as you plow, um, which isn't what you want. It's be, you know, you want a consistent, thickness so you're not it's not getting harder it's it's the same as your plow so keep your the width at the end of your blade the same thickness like that yeah 
again you don't want that short bit that cuts in too quick too deep and then you're going to burn yourself out uh, there's not a lot of uh, friction contact on that short bit either so start with a flat surface like that yeah and the width i like around about eight millimeter but it will vary on your materials generally the harder your materials the thinner your end of your blade yeah uh, the softer obviously you go thicker to make more contact and not not burn it up as, as fast so with this Milan cherry 8 mil is about perfect around about a 30 degree angle on your blade yeah cut it off yeah and then what I do is I like to cut the end off yeah um, you can just turn it around like that and uh, go down 90 degrees yeah now what that does I'll show you yeah what that does is that flat bit there acts like a plow and pushes the dust forward yeah as you're plowing into your uh, stopping point where you're going to build your ember so that's what you blade layout should look like yeah next thing let's talk about the uh, the grip because when I started as well I was using this overhand method like well not this not this isn't the overhand this is like a two-hand method yeah pulling it like that and yeah going like this which just felt the natural way when I started and uh, I did get my first ember that way but I forced myself to learn what I got originally shown which is the Samoan grip yeah, and I'll come around here I'll show it to you because yeah. this does make a big difference actually you get a lot more pressure holding it this way so you grab it with one hand yeah Put your thumb up there like that and you get your other hand come over your thumb there and grab it on the other hand like that yeah and then what you got is a direct pressure point there with both hands together yeah that you can push forward with like that yeah so that's grip, yeah. I've also seen, uh, I think, Pyro Dojo does a, a grip with his fingers like, like that, but to me, I find that really uncomfortable, actually. Uh, something like that, he does, but I'd highly recommend using that Samoan grip method like that, yeah. For the best pressure. Okay. Next thing, let's talk about posture. So, when I was starting, I was doing this two hand thing and I was sort of right here like this. What, what you want to do is get back, get back. So you're pushing forward like this with your weight, yeah? You've got this trap down, yeah? You're pushing with you from your and your shoulders here when you're delivering that energy right down through your arms in a, a rocking motion like this look pushing it slowly forward yeah the blade so you got all your body weight behind it pushing yeah like that and that's the sort of posture you need you need to get yeah and if you even if you sat on it, you sat back and you're pushing forward with your, your body weight behind you, yeah. So posture, another little tip, get back, push forward, yeah.
Next thing, burning the groove in. Yeah. I mean, I have some seen people, and I have done it myself. Uh, just from being prepared, just slowly burn it in, and then keep going, generate an ember. But for learning, I'd say burn it in first. Uh, take a break and once you've got a nice track burned in and a nice stopping point established then you can go for it so I'll show you uh, how to burn it in yeah start right in your little divot there at your stopping point and just keep making little short strokes so a little wisp of smoke already and then start to work back slowly increasing your stroke length I'm lengthening the track but what's happening here is because you're starting there and working back you're creating a, a bit of a slope and because you're pushing down all the time as well and that's what you want that slope because at the bottom of the slope you'll hit your stopping point and that's what you want to create yeah so got a nice little track burnt in there get your breath back get fully uh, energized again before you start to go and try and get your ember so got it all secure there yeah no movement well trapped down stopped up we're burnt in we're gonna go for it get your grip yeah now when you start plowing yeah you can start like 30 degrees you, you keep it pretty low the angle when you're starting you've got a bigger surface area more friction and you'll build heat up quicker just slow long strokes at first and you'll see it smoking and you'll see dust gathering yeah at that point speed up yeah and increase the angle sharper angle now slow down towards the end and push those last few bits of dust forward and gently give it a whack if you see smoke coming as you're plowing you should see the pile build like a normal uh, dust pile and smoke emitting that's uh, always the key in indications that's saying you, you, you most quietly got an ember so you stop yeah like I said that last stroke gently push the uh, last bits of dust into the pile and uh, if everything's right you should have yourself uh, an ember Now as that's uh, coalescing, what you can do is just give it a little tap, helps all the particles coalesce together and uh, form into a nice coal, yeah? So. There we go, we've got a nice, uh, nice call on the go there. Sometimes these plow embers tend to uh, stick in the groove a bit, so uh, you've got to just take care when you're uh, removing them. Get a good tinder bundle ready, yeah, 
we don't have to move uh, anything too far. Nice big ember there. So you gotta get it near as you can and just help it out into your tinder bundle. Get those embers into uh, the finer material there. Boom. There you got it guys. One more thing is sometimes it was on the first go, you might not get it. That's alright. You've got a nice little uh, track set up there. What I do is just trim the sides, yeah. Back to the stopping point like that. If it's gone a, a bit too deep, yeah. Instead of flattening the end off again, uh, because everything's still hot, what I do is just I flip that round. Yeah. And this acts to push the dust forward. Start at a lower angle there now. Yeah. Um, so that's another little thing you can do as well, yeah. Um, digs in a little bit more sometimes, but if you set hot, that's good because it'll just catch these flaky bits and uh, they'll fire up uh, no problem. So there you got it, guys. That's. Uh, Everything I've learned so far with the fire plow, um, I hope it helps. Uh, I hope you can uh, find a few uh, good pointers to uh, help you get going with it and hopefully get your first fire plow ember, guys. So, thanks very much for watching. Uh, thanks for all your likes and support. Uh, we'll catch you later, guys.